Karen. Thank uh -huh. you. Okay. Okay. Um, we are coming from First Sam. I'm oh, sorry, Second Samuel, the twelfth chapter, and the uh, uh, first we're going through um, verses one through nine, and then thirteen. Uh, one through nine, and then thirteen to fifteen, and then some after that. So. Um, if we could go to our next slide, please. Thank you. Can someone read that for us, please? By the end of this, of this lesson, we will explore how sin's consequences extend beyond the individual and bring heart to God and others, address sin and the injustices that occur as a result, and admit our sins, ask God's forgiveness, and make godly choices. Okay, thank you, Sister Jean. Um, and now if we could just go to our next slide, please. Here's just a little information on, on 2 Samuel. Samuel. Um, and if someone would read that for us, please, just some little, little facts. According to Jewish tradition, the book of 2 Samuel was written by the three prophets, Samuel, Gad, and Nathan around 930 BC. In the original Hebrew, Hebrew composition, first and second Samuel is one book. During the second half of the third century BC, 70 scribes translated the Hebrew Old Testament into the Greek. Because the scrolls at that time did not have enough space for the content of Samuel, it was divided into two books. The book of second Samuel continues to show the virtue of humility the destructiveness of pride and the faithfulness of God's promise. We see David succeed and fail, and we see God's promise for a future king at the beginning and the end of the story. Okay, first and second Samuel, they tell us about, about one of the greatest characters in the Bible, and that is King David. And we have I mean, there are so, if, if I ask you all, which I am going to, uh, thank you, Debbie, for reading that. And uh, Kim, if you could go on to, to the, uh, the next slide. If I ask you guys to tell me something about David, what can you tell me? And I mean, I'm opening up the floodgates here because it's so much about David in First and Second Samuel. What, what do we know about it? Well, I, I think, first of all, he was a man after God's own heart. Yes. Uh huh. And he, he was, he was sorry for the all the sins that he had committed, and uh, he, you know, he was repentant and asked for forgiveness, and God forgave him because of his heart. And mm -hmm. I think that for me, that's the most significant thing I see about David is that he, you know, he sinned. He acknowledged his sin when, you know, when. Uh, Nathan went to him. He was forgiven. God, God forgave him because he did repent, and he was sorry for what he did. But you know, there were con uh, there were consequences for his sin. Mm -hmm. he, he was forgiven, as you know, it's consequences for everyone that sins. Right. Yeah. Absolutely, and above above all, David was human, and like all of us who try to live a holy life, we fall short all the time, all the time. We fall short. And as uh, Shirley said, he was forgiven for that. So um, before we read, I need um, somebody, before we get into these first scriptures, I need somebody to find 2 Samuel chapter 11 and read verses 14 through 17. 2 Samuel chapter 11, 14 through 17. So, and then um, if someone will just go ahead. Does anybody have that before we get, get into this? Did anybody have it? I do. I, I you said second. You said Second Samuel chapter eleven, mm -hmm. uh, verse fourteen through seventeen. Yes, it reads: yeah. In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it to Uriah. 
In it, he wrote, put Uriah out in front where the fighting is fierce. Then withdraw from him so he will be struck down and die. So while Joab had the city under siege, he put Uriah at a place where he knew the strongest defenders were. When the men of the city came out and fought against Joab, some of the men of, in David's army failed. Moreover, Uriah the Hittite died. Okay. Mm. This gives us a little background as to, uh, to where we are now. But even before this, what happened that got David in this position where he was having Uriah killed? What happened? He stand with Uriah's wife, Bathsheba. Yes. This always fascinated me as a, as a young girl. Why is Bathsheba taking a bath on the roof? But okay. <laughs> <laughs> but he looks over and he sees her and he's enamored by her beauty she's so beautiful and he's like oh you know i got to have that now we know that uh he was a king he had everything but he wanted her so he saw her he called for her what's she gonna say the king wants you Bathsheba. the sheba she's like no i'm not going over there mm -mm, that's not it the king called for you you go so she went, he slept with her, and she got pregnant. And now he's trying to cover it up. Right. So this is why he sends Uriah to the front lines. And then he gets, he, he has him out there with some other people. And then he says, make everybody pull back after that. So it leaves him defense, defenseless. He's on the front line, and he has nobody behind him to protect him. So he gets killed. So now David is like, okay, it's all good now, because Uriah's dead. But that was his plot. So that's the history of these verses that we're coming to now. So if somebody could read these, please, one through six. One thing that I had never thought about before, I was wondering why was Bathsheba bathing where the public could see her in the first place? That's why I'm trying to figure out why would she, if David could see her from where he's at and she's bathing, I'm kind of wondering, you know, why is she out there? I don't know, but that's one thing that kind of man I, that I hadn't thought of before. I'm trying to figure out why is she. Uh, well, and I think I did see, read somewhere that back in those days, that's where they put the tub. They put it on and, the roof. And part in the uh, lesson, it, it tells us that uh, it was a time of her purification. Right. And I guess that's where they, what well, guess. That's, that's a good point, going. too. Yeah. She was done with it. So she had to be away from everybody. Yeah. So that's a good point, exactly. too, Carol. Good one. Thank you. Okay, uh, someone read this, please. So the Lord sent Nathan the prophet to tell David this story. There were two men in a certain town. One was rich and one was poor. The rich man owned a great many sheep and cattle. The poor man owned nothing but one little lamb he had bought. He raised that little lamb and, and it grew up with his children. It ate from the man's own plate and drank from the from his cup. He cuddled it in his arms like a baby daughter. One day, a guest arrived at the home of the rich man, but instead of killing an animal from his own flock or herd, he took the poor man's lamb and killed it and prepared it for his guest. David was furious. As surely as the Lord lives, he vowed any man who would do such a thing deserves to die. He must repay four lambs to the poor man for the one he stole and for having no pity. Okay. What Nathan is doing here, Nathan is a prophet. And God is using Nathan to go to, to um, David to point out his sin. And he's not pulling any punches here, but what he's doing is, as Jesus did, he's using a parable, trying to make David see what's going on. So David hears this story and he thought, well, how dare he? He had so much. Why would he do that? So now he has to be punished for that. So if we can go on to our next slide, please. God's reform, seven through nine. Would somebody read that, please? Then Nathan said to David, you are that man. The Lord God of Israel says, I anointed you king of Israel and saved you from the power of Saul. 
I gave you your master's house and his wives and the kingdoms of Israel and Judah. And, and if that had not been enough, I would have given you much more. Mm -hmm. Why then have you despised the word of the Lord and done this horrible deed? For you have murdered Uriah the Hittite with the with the sword of the Ammonites and stolen his wife. Okay, so here he goes. Oh, so David, you think that's bad? You think that guy was wrong? Well, guess what? The guy who did that was you. Mm. And isn't he, David, kind of displaying the way a lot of wealthy people are these days? I've got everything, but I want yours too. <laughs> it is like little kids. You ever see little children playing? They're, they're mm. uh, little toddlers. You got your little Elmo stuffed doll and I got my little rubber ducky or whatever. And we're playing. And then I look up, I'm happy. But hey. I want your Elmo doll and I'm going to take it mm. and I'm going to keep my little rubber ducky too. And this is what mm -hmm. he has done. This, this, this guy in the parable, all he had was this one little lamb and he loved it. He loved it. He said he loved it like his own daughter. He let the lamb eat from his plate. He let the lamb drink from his cup. A lot of people do that with their dogs. Not me, but you know, he let, he loved this lamb. And the king is like, uh-uh, I want it. So now Nathan's coming in and he's pointing it out. You are that guy. You're the one who did that. Now, who is the, who is making the accusation here? Who is holding David to account? God is. God mm -hmm. is. Absolutely. He said, this is what the Lord said. I gave you everything. I protect, protected you from Saul. Y'all know how David ran from Saul. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ran from Saul he, and God protected him. Then he put him in Saul's house, gave him, made him king over Israel and Judah, gave him everything you want. And he said, and it, even if that wasn't enough, all you had to do was ask me and I would have given you more. Why did you do this thing? He said, why? You know, so here comes God. Why did you do this? Could they, could there be an accept, an acceptable answer? What could he say? No, uh, God, what had happened was, you know, what are you going to say when God accuses you? Can somebody find 2 Corinthians 5 and 10 for me? Oh, never mind. I'll just read it. So 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 10 says, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each of us may receive what is due us for the things done while in the body, whether good or bad. We're going to have to, hey, when we get up there, it's going to be like, uh sissy mm -hmm. you remember back in 1978 when you did <laughs> blah blah why did you do that mm -hmm. or i want to acknowledge that you did something nice for somebody but that's but the and and that's a good thing but we're going to have to give account of what we do when we or what we did in the body when we get to heaven then when we go to first corinthians four and five therefore judge nothing before the appointed time, wait until the Lord comes. He will bring to light what is hidden in darkness and will expose the motives of the heart. At that time, each will receive their praise from God. So these two verses from Corinthians, how does that line up with what's going on with David here? Mm. Got, he's got, David's got to yes, give an account. Yes. He, mm -hmm. he has to give an account as we will. So, you know, he's ashamed. What can he do? What could his answer be? Truth. Confession. The truth. Exactly. Exactly. Um, if anybody's, somebody back up to um, 
2 Samuel 12, and we're going to read those few verses in between 10 and 12. Now, therefore, the sword will never depart from your house because you despised me and took the wife of Uriah, the Hittite, to be your own. You said 10 to 12? Yes. This is what the Lord says. Out of your own household, I am going to bring calamity upon you before your very eyes. I will take your wives and give them to, who, to one who is close to you. And he will lie with your wives in broad daylight. You did it in secret, but I will do this thing in broad daylight before all Israel. Yeah. And that's what Corinthians says. Whatever is done in the dark is going to be, it's going to be brought to the light. And what we all need to understand, we can't hide from God. We know that. We can't right. hide from him. Mm -hmm. And even though we've done it, and nobody, you live your whole life, whatever the sin may be, you live your whole life and never get called out on it. But then as it says in Corinthians, when you get to the judgment seat, God is going to tell us, I saw, I saw you. And, th and then we'll be like David, looking down at our feet in shame because we have no explanation. But the good part is that we're forgiven. So can we go on to the next slide, please? Anyone? Then David confessed to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. Nathan replied, yes, but the Lord has forgiven you and you won't die for this sin. Nevertheless, because you have shown utter contempt for the word of the Lord by doing this, your child will die. After Nathan returned to his home, the Lord sent a deadly illness to the child of David. And you are his wife. Thank you. So God will forgive us of our sins. We know that because Christ died for us so he could cover our sins. And our mortal souls will be saved as long as we are in Christ. But again, just because we're forgiven does not mean we're going to be we're not going to be punished and so what is david's punishment here he's losing his child mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. he's gonna lose his child he's gonna and has anyone well anybody got anything on these verses Is it easy for us to confess our sins? Is if it? You are not, sometimes, depending on what it is. Yeah. So is that what we're supposed to do, though? Just, I mean, we can confess it all to God. Yeah. Yes. We confess all of our sins to God and ask for forgiveness. Mm -hmm. And that is just the great blessing of his grace and mercy and faith is that we'll forgive. But it's and like Sharon said, if we're talking to a family member or a friend or somebody, is it easy to confess our sins to them? It depends on what it is. I was talking to a friend of mine last night, as a matter of fact, and we said, there's some things that we may have done in our lives that we'll take to our grave. But the Bible prompts us to confess our sins even to mankind or to someone. If you've sinned against someone, you're supposed to go. Anybody ever experience, experience that where they've done something and they had to go to someone and ask for their forgiveness? Okay, oh, nobody yes. wants to hear yeah. that. Yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Huh? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. I'm sure we all have. Yeah. yeah. And, Sissy, I, I wonder if 
um, I mean, I think it's, this lesson is also thought provoking because, you know, it, it, oftentimes we ask the question why, right? And right. I often think about if Nathan had not have come to David, you know, what this story would have been like. So my other question was, was David so uh, arrogant at times that because he was king, that he felt like he could get away with doing something like that? <clears throat> because oftentimes, I mean, that, that's the other side of the coin, right? Is that sometimes we will do things even in the sight of God and think we're going to get away with it. Yeah. Yeah. And you think, think of David's beginning when he was out in the field, minding them sheep. He was the lesser of all his brothers, but they came and got him and he turned in. In, uh, and he became great. And even when he was dealing with Saul, it was like the when he went and he killed all the um, the Philistines and all that. And he says, well, um, I forget the number. Uh, Saul killed a thousand and then uh, yeah, David too. killed tens of thousands. And so, I mean, you're, that's a good point, Kim. Maybe he's a bit puffed up at this point because he came from meager beginners. He was just a little bitty old thing compared to his brothers, I, but I now think he's the, king. He's I think king. the other reality that we we as, as believers have to be aware of, daily we walk side by side with our flesh, okay? Mm -hmm. Our flesh, sometimes we grab hold of it and we'll hold hands with it, and we get caught up in mm -hmm. the stuff that we don't want to. Um, we all have probably experienced that. And so it's a constant battle. You know, David was enticed by what he saw and then what he saw develop into, you know, what the scripture said, sin and sin became full blown, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a constant yeah. battle. Um, we know yeah, the we Lord, but we walk in this flesh. And if we don't hold on to the Lord, the flesh will drag us to do some things that we Never would have thought we would done, but by God's grace and mercy mm -hmm. and love, we can go to him for forgiveness. But more importantly, as the scripture says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful just to forgive us and to yes. cleanse us. He got to clean. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I got to be cleansed over. You know, you mop a floor. You only do it. You don't do it one time. <laughs> you got to go back again. <laughs> so that flesh, we walk day, every day with that flesh and we got to. Just hold on to the Lord as we get caught up into the same thing David has. Right. And then although although God forgives us for our sins, there's always consequences, you know, repercussions that uh, just reverberate because of sin. Even though we've been forgiven, we repent and been forgiven, there's consequences. We can look at things, sins that we've been forgiven for, and, you know, you can see some things uh some consequences from that you know that are still here ongoing well and that's true you know we you know god sometimes grant, grants us mercy and mercy is when we deserve to be punished but we don't get punished so sometimes he grants us mercy but like it says here yeah david we're forgiven but this this sin that you committed you're gonna have to pay for it through the death of your child, your love child. And as it was saying back in um, Aim for Change, our sin can affect someone else. What we did can affect someone else. I will uh, never forget when we first went to uh, Zion Hope, Pastor Hampton was there. And shortly after we got there, he announced that he was leaving, answering a call to go to the church in New York. And everybody was all upset about it. And we were new to the church and people had different reasons for being upset, but we were upset because where we came from was so much different than Zion Hope. And we loved the way that the, the congregation was and the way pastor taught and I mean we were just really kind of oppressed in our own church 
in our old church. But then Pastor Hampton said that he was leaving and it upset me. And I'm not gonna lie, I was, you know, tearful or whatever. But then he said to us, I cannot let Zion Hope suffer because I don't do what God is telling me to do. He knew that if he stayed after God was telling him to leave, that Zion Hope could suffer. And that is the consequence, can be the consequences of sin. What did you do? Why is this happening? Because you did this or, you know, you stole from someone else, then now they don't have, so they go steal from someone. You see what I'm saying? It 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 could it is a roller coaster. So yeah, your sins can affect you. The Bible talks about the sins of the father. I, there was a sermon about that. I can't even remember how it went, but yeah, what you do can affect other people. So the, David's consequence was the death of his son. Now, do we remember how David reacted when his son died? Because by this time, he goes on and he gets Bathsheba, you know, um, go with all his other wives and whoever, but they have this baby. And when he died, what was his reaction? He put on sackcloth and mourned the loss of his son, asked God to spare the child's life. Yeah, he did. But it also affected Bathsheba too. Yes. It was her yes. son as well. Yes, yes. This, this is, I, I don't know if Bathsheba had any more kids, but I'm going to say she didn't. Because, well, we're going to say no, because he tried to send, David tried to send Uriah to his wife. Go, you don't have to go to war. You know, we're going to go on and give you a little leave. You go and sleep with your wife. Because he's hoping that after Uriah sleeps with his wife, then the pregnancy, his, his, the pregnancy is covered up. The, the baby daddy is hidden. The real baby daddy is hidden. Mm -hmm. Because if you're pregnant, your husband did it. It wasn't, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. And I'm, I don't know about y'all, but one of my guilty pleasures is Maury Povich. <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> you are not the father. <laughs> exactly. And all the time, I mean, you see the, well, she slept with him right after she slept with me. So who knows who the father is? And so this was David's, his plan. But then Uriah being the, the, the soldier that he was, he's like, no, King, I'm supposed to go. I'm supposed to be on the front line with my men. I'm supposed to be with my men. I'm supposed to fight. I'm supposed to be. And he wouldn't go. Mm -hmm. He slept outside the gates or something. But he wouldn't even go sleep with his own, own wife because he was that dedicated to what he was. And then David's plan faltered. So he had him killed. And that's what, what brought us to all to, to these verses today. And then we too know going further, all the different things that happened to King David and his family because oh, yeah. of that sin. Yep. His sons and uh, things like that that happened. His own son you know, raped his daughter and all that. It was just one thing. It was just a snowball of things mm -hmm. that happened to David, you know, but I too want to say with, you know, after David, after his son, God took his son, he got up, washed his face and, you know, mm -hmm. and the people around him was like wondering, you know, you were all, you know, sad and praying and not eating while your son was alive, but now that he's dead, you get up and go about your business like nothing happened. And to me, it was just like, you know, David accepted God, the punishment that God said. He said he was going to take his son. So, you know, there was nothing mm -hmm. else to do but get up and try to live a life that was pleasing to God. But the thing is, we have to forgive ourselves. A lot of times we sin and ask God for forgiveness, but then sometimes Satan comes in and wants to try to condemn us and you know and i remember that scripture says therefore there is no condemnation for them that love the lord you know so we have to learn and i and i've guilt i've been guilty of that want to go back and say how can god forgive me of this or that or whatever you know when god mm -hmm. throws it in the sea of forgetfulness so we have to do the same as well yes that's true yes. thank you debbie thank you 
that that's true. We do have to learn how to forgive ourselves and accept the punishment. Yes. You know, we can pray for things, um, pray and pray and pray, and we never get what we pray for. Or you pray that God will take you from a particular circumstance. Lord, please don't let this happen to me. Don't take it away from me. Mm-hmm. Don't, but it happens anyway. And then again, that is that's happened to me when I was going through, when I was going through my kidney thing, I prayed and prayed and prayed that the Lord would keep me from dialysis. And the nurse called one day and she said, Miss Raglan, your numbers have um they're being sustained they flat like you're good you know so i'm like oh thank you lord thank you lord thank you lord the next call from the doctor was get in here we need to get you in here we need to get you together get your access built because you're going to have to go on dialysis there's no more putting it off and i was angry at god because i said i just knew you were going to keep this from me and here i am blah, 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 you know? So I was, I was angry. I was mad. I was hurt. But then my prayer changed because when hooked up to the dialyzer, and some of you may have heard this story before, so just listen to it again. <laughs> Sitting there in that chair, it sounds like a heart beating and it sounds like somebody on a resuscitator. It's like, shh. And I look and I watched it, the blood going out, the blood coming in. And I'm like, this magnificent invention made by the hands of man from the knowledge that God gave him to make it. And I'm sitting here and I'm alive because of this machine. No, I was not spared from dialysis but I was spared from death because of a, of a machine that God allowed man to create. So my prayer changed to thank you. Yeah. I'm not mad and forgive me for even having the audacity to be angry, but we can be angry at God. He understands. He understands. And he'd be like me and my kids. You can be as mad as you want. Just go on in your room, and, but just don't slam my door. Go on. Be mad. But he understands that. But so mm-hmm. even if you don't get what you pray for, you learn from it and then yeah. your prayer changes. And just like Debbie said with David, it's like, okay, I prayed, I put on the sackcloth and I didn't eat and I didn't do all that. And God took him anyway. So, okay, Lord, you told me that my life was going to be hell on earth. You told me that. Mm-hmm. So, but I'm going to get up and I'm going to press on. And I'm going to keep serving you. And as it was said earlier, David was a man after God's own heart. In spite of everything that he did. (laughs) And what good news is that for us? Through the blood of Jesus that we're saved, we're covered. Mm -hmm. And we are forgiven. Just don't do it no more. Okay? Mm -hmm. Amen. (laughs) (laughs) Anybody else got anything on these verses? Mm. This is a great story. I, I'm, I'm sure there's a book out there that um, would just concentrate solely on the life of David. And it's just, the whole story is fascinating. All the stuff that happened to him. But with all of that, he just continued to serve the Lord. Even though he's getting punished. How, home life was just a mess. He just kept serving. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think kind of you know just re. I think that reiterates what I said before. We walk in this world, and we're gonna go through a lot of mess because of the world. But he held on to God, and we gotta hold on to God. And the paradox for me, my walk with Christ is that, as I always say, I'm still walking in this world. Now, I'm not of the world, but sometimes I'm gonna be touched, bumped, grabbed, tripped by the world 
But it's important mm -hmm. that we hold on to God because if we don't, the world well, is going to drag us through all this mess. Just think of David said, forget God. He could not have endured mm -hmm. the death of his son. Think of Sissy had said, forget God. She could not endure having to go through dialysis. It's because she held on to God. David held on to God that despite what the world bumps us and gives to us, we go forward. So for me, that's our paradox. We're mm. in the world, but we're not of the world. Mm -hmm. We have victory, but that victory is continued upon us, holding on to mm. God, despite what may have a hold on to us. So. And thank you, Chess, for that. And that's it. We just have yeah. to hold on. There's mm -hmm. an old song that said, we just hold on and wait and see what the end's going to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and what the, the Bible says, we have to worry about the sin that so easily besets us. We go through life and don't expect to do things. And then something comes up and then there we go. But mm -hmm. we're forgiven. Like you say, Chess, it's a day by day battle beating the flesh Amen. down. Amen. Anybody else? And I'd like to uh, add one other thing, uh, 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 go a different road just for a second. The prophet Paul on the road to Damascus, he was on his high horse, if you uh, view it. And he ran into something that he had ne never thought he would experience. Uh, God asked him, why are you persecuting me? And he fell off his horse. He became mm -hmm. blind, mm -hmm. and then he had to go through a lot of things. He had a lot of time to think, and mm -hmm. God sent another prophet to uh, tend to him until he got ready for him to do his work. And then as Paul went through the rest of his life, he started understanding mm -hmm. the things that he had done. So when things came to him, when he was beaten, when he was thrown in jail, when different things happened to him, he accepted them for his penance, knowing that God was with him, but yet he still had to go through some things for what he had done in his persecution of Christians. So like, like you all have iterated the things that we have done, we may be forgiven and we may still serve God, but there's, there's times that we're gonna have to uh, account for what mm -hmm. we did. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Forgiveness does not necessarily be a mean you won't get punished. Yeah, yeah, I kind of I kind of think about crazy things at times. <laughs> and one of the things with Sissy. No, was Sharon, no. <laughs> Sissy was talking about coming before the judgment the seat of Christ. And I said, I just hope it's gonna be a private conversation. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> My daughter and I used to joke about, you know, different people that we know they have done different things. And we would say, well, when they come before the judgment seat, we're going to get us some lawn chairs and some popcorn <laughs> and some Diet Pepsi and just sit back and listen to you try to explain what you did in your lifetime. I mean, it's, we can joke about it, but hey, it's a reality. It's a reality. Mm -hmm. But with that, when we're going to be held accountable for what we have done bad, God is also going to recognize what we have done good. Yeah. And it's just like you go to, you know, you got to go through it, but you just go through it because at the end result, if you have been in Christ, go and take your little punishment and come on up to glory because that's where you're going to end up. But you still got to explain. You're still going to have to explain. Mm -hmm. And thank you, Paul. Thank you for that. That's a good analogy. Thank you for that. You're welcome. Anyone else? Any questions? Any comments? No? Okay. All right. Uh, sis, Minister Landers, did you have anything? Um, hopefully everyone has gotten the message that the worship service today is canceled due to the weather and keeping everyone safe. So um, they're airing a blast from the past. Um, it'll, it'll still be airing at 11 o'clock on YouTube or Facebook. So that's all I have. I wonder, can they go ahead and upload what you did for today? The facts for today and how you put it together? No, no ma'am. Maybe later? No, no. I don't know how they would do that, but oh. 
Preferably, we'll be back next week. We can get I it would in. Just, was, the way that you got it set up with the pictures and everything that I said, I was really interested in seeing how that turned out. I bet it was very good. Yeah. So we'll redo communion next week. We'll redo communion next week. Oh, that's a good question. Probably. That is a good question. Yeah. <laughs> you think so, Paul? Well, I'm not going to say we are, and I'm not going to say we're not. What we're gonna have to do That's is just wait. we're gonna wait and see when next Sunday comes. <laughs> could be, could right. be right. not. Wisdom. <laughs> I I don't know. I would think so, but I don't. I, I'm like Paul. I don't know. <sighs> okay. Well, that's all I have. Do we have any prayer requests? I'll keep, keep keep praying for me, please. That I'll be able to I'll be able to stand firm on my feet and able to walk properly. So I'm you can't problems. even walk, Jean? Yes, I have problems. I can't do my walk much. My one leg is giving out on me. Mm, bless your heart. I'm uh, going through uh, more pain, pain, pain all the time. Pain, pain. I forgot to tell everyone Ralph's 83rd birthday was uh, the fourth. Oh, he's 83. He's 83. He's 83. Okay. No wonder he always talk about how he old. (laughs) Don't start, sissy. How you doing? (laughs) Don't you I'm old. (laughs) Don't you get him started now. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, he say old. He is. Uh, well, happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yes, happy birthday. Well, he's he's not in here right now. Okay. All right, that's a blessing. Okay, good that's lesson, good. Sissy. It was very oh, good lesson. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Thank yeah. you so much. Praise God. Praise. God. All right, praying praying us out. We we have um. Oh, I have a praise report. Y'all know. Elena has this friend that's in in Georgia that's been fighting cancer for like eight or nine years. They finally found something that is is, uh, some kind of treatment that is reducing her cancer cells. And if she keeps on it in probably 18 months, she could go in total remission. So that's just another blessing. Shirley, you know about that, don't you? How just stuff just pop up and just be gone. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. So Shirley dealt with that. It was one day it was there, then the next day it was gone. Mm -hmm. Uh, My friend, same way, 18 months to live, no cancer, nowhere. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I've been praying. We have been praying for Elena's friend. And I mean, She's a young woman. She's like 37, 38, and she's been fighting cancer for seven years. And she's still mm. fighting. And she's still giving God the glory every day. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Okay. All right. Who will pray us out, please? Anybody? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Yes, yes. please. Let us pray. Eternal Father, our God, it is again, Master, we come before you as humble as we know how. Master, we thank you for this another day's journey. Master, we thank you for things being as well as they are. You've heard all the prayer requests, Father God. I can't itemize them or give you the components, but we know that you are omnipotent, you're omnipresent, you're all knowing. So we ask right now that you heal and deliver in a way that only you can. Bless each and every one of us on this Zoom meeting this morning, the homes that represent. Father God, bless all those who are less fortunate, those who are don't have shelter, don't have food, Father God. And we thank you, Father God, for bringing us all through this storm safely, Father God. Father God, we just ask you to continue to bless our world, our country, our society, and all those who stand in the need, Father God. We ask a blessing for Zion Hope Church family, from the younger to the oldest, from the front door to the back door. Continue to bless our pastor in a special manner, God. Continue to anoint him to continue to be the servant, the pastor that you've called him out to be. Bless his family in a mighty, mighty way, Father God. Bless his mother and his father. You know what they're going through, Father God. But we know that you are God that is able to do extremely abundantly of all we ask, think, or imagine. So we put all these situations in your hands. 
For in your hands, Master, is the best hands it could be in. Father God, we thank you for our facilitator this morning. We ask you, Father God, to continue to bless her to be that servant, that teacher you called her out to be. Father God, now we want to say that we love you and we love you more than anything. We, we thank you so wholeheartedly for giving us the best gift that mankind could ever have. That's salvation through your daughter's yes. Home yes. and down on Calvary that we all would have the right to the tree of life. We love you. We exalt you. And we praise you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give all thanks. Amen. 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 Y'all stay warm and safe. Amen. 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 All right. Be safe. Bye. 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 Bye.